We are back at the Fresh Cred Podcast here live at IFPA Food Service Conference. And we're wrapping it up with our final segment. We guys have saved the, the best, best for last. last. As if, I know it's a, How did a, I know you were going to say that? But, is that, a, is that right. an overused term? Um, no, it's not overused. It's actually, it's, it's a little antiquated. But Okay. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to imply something about me? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. 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 That's a jab for leaving me out of the last segment but so you 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 took yourself out of the last segment you volunteered you 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 know what they're gonna sit on your lap or? no 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 we we had a plan to figure it out where you could be and you're like you know what i'm tired that's what you said you yeah. said i'm I so said tired i, I can't you. go <laughs> maybe it was that maybe it's a break for me <laughs> uh enough about us yes please right, let's let's move to our final wonderful guest and i don't know that he needs an introduction but i'm gonna go ahead and do one real quick anyway because look th- th- this gentleman mr steve grinstead um the founder of uh is it the fresh edge or just fresh edge fresh edge, fresh edge. so you, you left out the unlike the, the fresh cred you right. you took the v i just went that's straight right. fresh edge so. right. like madonna and sia and all the ones yeah hair. no no need to say the yeah well who was it wasn't there a musician that said the some the uh the creator tyler tyler the creator mm-hmm. yeah so you guys probably don't know who that is do you know who tyler who's the creator no okay <laughs> so anyway that we'd like to either <laughs> i probably shouldn't you're right so uh so welcome steve grinstead thank you sir now so steve and i uh we were talking before the show got started i mean we go back a long ways we could I go down memory lane for about two and a half, three hours. We're not going to do that to you guys, although it'd be fun for Steve and I. It wouldn't be that much fun for all you guys, I don't think. But, uh, no, um, Steve is, is certainly somebody for me in the industry that uh, – I have watched and certainly looked up to and, and considered, you know, a mentor for me and and this business. And uh, he's always been he's always been a guy that that has never been somebody I, I couldn't call or approachable um, from from many early days, early on when I first met him and uh, down in Houston, Texas. Right, Steve? That's right. Houston. Yeah. So now I, I, I believe where you are, Houston native. I wasn't actually. I was born in Tampa, Florida. OK. Yeah. Oh, that's so now that that takes you. You spend a little time in Tampa every now and then, down, I, don't you? I do. I have a beach home south of Clearwater. Very so nice. I'm there every chance I get, so, <laughs> as you can tell. Yeah, I was gonna say you carry a nice tan. I mean, that for a guy that's a, this is a guy that I mean, I can't even imagine what kind of airline miles you must have racked up. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you know, so and and. Fresh Edge, it's like I said, the founder of Fresh Edge. Um, just, you know, before we get into some of your history and stuff like that, I mean, you're on the road a lot. You're in the news a lot, right? Because you're you're actively uh, building Fresh Edge kind of like uh, as quick as you possibly can. Uh, how did you get back? So, so because it wasn't like you, you had, you kind of looked like maybe you were just <laughs> going to take it easy, right? You'd done plenty of things. I mean, this guy's been doing a lot in the produce space and looked like maybe – you know, you, you'd have had enough, and then next thing you know, you're back and, and back at, a I think, a faster pace than I've seen you before. So so what brought you this? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's been a lifetime of passion. I, I love this industry. I love, um, you know, I've, I really feel like I never had to work a day in my life. I've always loved what I did. And so, you know, I wake up every morning, and I never think, I, oh, God, i got to go to work today. I always think, gosh, how am I going to ever get everything I want to get done today <laughs> done? So, you know, it's just uh, it's a blessing and a curse, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I do love the business. I love working. I love the industry. I've tried to slow down several times, and uh, it seems like I uh, always get back in the fast lane. And it's just obviously where I like to be and where I'm comfortable. But, uh, you know, I started um, in, in my career sacking groceries in a grocery store. And uh, when, was this in Tampa? Or was... This is in Tampa. Okay. And uh, I um, ended up going through the management training program. And so I spent three months in meat department, three months in bakery, three months in the deli, three months in. And one of those stints was in produce. Mm-hmm. And. I just really fell in love with the produce business. It was the colors, the every day was a new day. Uh, you know, every day was a challenge, but you know, always interesting challenges and always challenges that ultimately had solutions to them. So I, I really just, you know, kind of fell in love with the business and uh, 
uh, ended up, you know, from there went to a uh, grocery chain out in Texas, which is what took me to Texas. That was Super Warehouse Foods. Okay. It was uh, originally the O'Brien's group, and then they were part of that box store craze in the, uh, you know, the early 80s, Mm -hmm. late 70s. And uh, so I went out there with with them and ran uh, as a director of produce for uh, uh, the produce departments of those stores. And uh, then, you know, we were supplied by Grocer's Supply Company. And so then Grocer's Supply offered me a role there. And I had a great run at Grocer's Supply, a great company. And uh, I was there for 10 years. And so it just kind of, you know, one thing rolled into right. the other. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm 47 years later and uh, still loving what I'm doing and uh, building and growing. But uh, so what brought me to Fresh Edge and why I kind of um, uh, slowed down and then sped up again was uh, I had been CEO of ProAct mm-hmm. and um, also while CEO of ProAct, I uh, had the opportunity to start up and acquire numerous companies that were vertically integrated in the in the supply chain. Right, and uh, so I um, went through and uh, uh, had. Um, Retired from there and uh, kind of uh, relaxed for a little bit. Retired, at, at right? At the beach, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, and, uh, you know, after my non-compete was done, I was um, just really uh, uh, ready to get something going again. So I decided I'm going to just do something that's, uh, you know, not full bore, not crazy, but, <laughs> you know, something to keep me busy. And uh, so I started the Grinstead Group, which uh, basically I did uh, a lot of M&A work. Mm-hmm. I did represented some private equity groups on the buy side and families mostly on the sell side in the food business. And we did some specialized consulting and some executive search as well. And so, you know, it was a really fun business and um, I was working through that. I also sat on numerous boards. At one time I was on eight boards Good gosh. In, the, in the industry. And uh, so that, that this is my relaxed time. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm, I'm, I'm... So, um, you know, I had the great opportunity to uh, work for what was the IFMP Foods, the Piazza and Indy Fruit mm-hmm. in Indianapolis. And uh, the family hired me to explore some opportunities uh, um, to um, uh, sell the business and uh, kind of, you know, go to that next era and that next time. And so I um, ended up making a connection with them to a private equity group. And so uh, those groups came together. And uh, as they came together, you know, I was very honored, but both the private equity group and the family asked me to join the board and to, you know, I had the opportunity to invest in the company. Mm-hmm. Still relatively passive role in position. It all sounds very relaxed, not it's, a big deal. Uh, kind of I'm easy. falling asleep. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, yeah it's no, no, it's, like a, it's easy it's like a walk in the park. Walk it's like a walk park. in the park. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, so then that, that went on for about a year and a half, and um, uh, it was really a great opportunity, just great companies. And uh, so at that point, um, you know, we decided we really had something that was special. We had kind of, you know, uh, figured out a, a formula for really, you know, exceeding customers' expectations and, and really being able to replicate a service level in multiple different markets. And so we decided it was really time as a board to really grow it. And then uh, Greg Cursaro, who was uh, CEO at the time and the um, private equity group Rotunda, which has been a great partner with us, um, they came to me and asked me if I would uh, CEO the company and come in and partner with Greg and build and grow it. So that's when we uh, created Fresh Edge Uh and um, started uh, acquiring companies and you know, when when I say acquiring companies, I mean that's technically what we do, but um, we don't look at it that we own you and now you're going to do what we say. Yeah, uh, we're we're really teaming up with fabulous companies. Good, good operating. Great, yeah, you're people, bringing good operating. Great customers. operators, and uh, and then you know our job is we're we're more like we see ourselves as stewards of those companies, mm-hmm. and you know we're we we work for them. So you know our job is to remove obstacles and provide resources 
so that they can effectively grow. And, right. Uh, and so, you know, that's uh, how it got born. Um, we've, um, you know, had a, an interesting run over the last few years. So uh, what's, 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 how, how many are part of the family now? How many companies? So we, it's a little confusing. We technically have about 18 companies, but there's, there's like a dozen really operating entities and gotcha. names. And uh, so we're, you know, located in Chicago and Indianapolis and uh in Michigan, uh, several locations in Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio. So heavily, Midwest heavily in the Midwest. Right. And uh, we're starting to, you know, continue to grow out and expand. Uh, we um, second to the last uh, group that joined us was uh, out of Pittsburgh. And then we had a group just recently that uh, became part of Fresh Edge down in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. So. Um, we, um, you know, are continuing to, to grow and, um, but, you know, it's really, you know, sometimes you go, man, your growth's been crazy or I can't believe you are, the, you know, this. I, and, you know, it's never been about revenue for me. I love creating value. Mm -hmm. and I love delivering on value propositions to customers and to our suppliers because both are partners to us. And, you know, in this business and, you know, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about the pandemic. Yeah, minute, for sure. But, you know one of the things I always loved about this business is it's just this, you know, incredible dance, this orchestrated dance that the industry does. Thousands of companies are involved in this dance. And if you go through and you look, you know, every day seeds are being planted and every day crops are being tended to and every day crops are being harvested because it's time to harvest. Yeah. Them. You don't harvest them, then they go bad. So, you know, every day this happens. Every day they're being loaded on, cooled and loaded on trucks and going across the country. And every day they're going through the distribution process and going on trucks and going out to, you know, the various customers and then ultimately you know providing nutritious and delicious fresh fruits and vegetables for uh you know all of america and all of the world so i mean it's a it's an amazing business and an amazing dance and so you know that was you know what's always been fascinating to me about that is this thing that never stopped yeah it's just every day it was just going 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 and uh and until it did well, I mean, and, and like I say, and my, my wife's sitting off uh, off the stage here, but I can appreciate the that whole go, go, go thing, right? And, you know, and I think that's partly what, you know, I, when I follow your career, I mean, I, I can I can sense, I mean, I know what that's like. And, you know, for me, I, it's the same way. I, I got, I can't imagine not, not being full blast all the time. I have, there's no, there's no, at least right now, there's no vision of me being somewhere on a beach with a book ever. Yeah. I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, and, and it's great to watch and I think it's great for, you know, to have somebody like you, cause I mean, for the industry, for the business to have that kind of passion, you know, that it, it's, it's good to, to have somebody like you that's willing to, you know, do that with, with, with your life and, and come in and, and work with these operating companies because, yeah, I mean, for you, you know, it, it's got to be about something more than just the revenues, right? Because uh, you, you, you've had and seen plenty of revenues over the course of your career, you know, and so that's awesome. And, you know, and it's great to watch you guys as you build this out and, you know, and then uh, you, you're bringing your family, your boys are into the business, which I know has got to be exciting for you. Um, but you talked about the pandemic, right, and and going into it, and and uh, I'd like you know for for everybody, you and I talked a little bit about it when it got started early on. But but you know, t take us through a little bit about how that was, because and, and and just real quick, Fresh Edge primarily is it, are they all the operating companies food service primarily. So um, we were uh, very heavily food service. We've really grown a lot, and we're much more diversified now. So okay. we're about 35% retail and 65% okay. food service now. But it, you know, we were much more food service at the time. And okay. so, you know, I, I've and, talked— And timeline-wise, Steve, Fresh Edge launched how long— or what? 
that wasn't that long ago. July of 19, yeah. So it was like... <laughs> yeah, just in time. Just yeah. in time. <laughs> we wanted to make sure we could be at the dance, so we, did, yeah, was it, did, we did, got all dressed did, up. Did any, yeah, I was going to say, did any of the board members question bringing you on the board when he's like, hey, let's start this, and then six months later, ex food service is not the place to be. Ex right? Exactly, so. exactly. But, you know, the thing was is... Um, and I've talked, you know, in many different groups and uh, various different things over the last couple of years. But and so many times people would say, yeah, I know, Steve, we're all in the, sa the same boat, you know. And I was like, yeah, not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all in the same storm, but we're in really different boats. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I didn't even thought of it. We're in the same storm. Yeah. That's, that's good. We were definitely in the same storm. But, uh, you know, it was just and, – and even so much of the industry really didn't have appreciation for what food service went through true i, I mean it was catastrophic it was unimaginable you know what i mean i mean we had problems that we never even dreamed of um so the music stops everything shuts down and so and you know in the midwest and in the more northern areas it shut down harder and faster and for much longer than like in texas and florida and some of these other states why not your and problems I had problems our problems had problems and i think a perfect example of that is you know one day i get a call and they're like you know where are we going to park all these trucks so i mean we've got hundreds and hundreds of trucks mm -hmm. we never parked them all mm -hmm. they they always were going 24 yeah. hours a day seven wow. days a week so all of a sudden we got trucks we're having to park we got nowhere to park them so mm -hmm. we have to rent a parking lot to park our trucks so you know just things that you don't really even think about in the process well and that, that was what i was going to chime in i mean i think what you, you talked about how quick and how fast, right? Uh, you know, and you had talked before about produce and how it works and plant and it keeps coming and produces, you know, and, and you're in a business that it is true just in time, right? I mean, the restaurant, you know, when you're delivering an avocado to a restaurant, they're not going to take three days for that avocado to get ripe. They they're, need it. they're eating it that after that somebody's eating it that afternoon. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's the true just in, And, oh, by the way, you're dealing with a product that is, well, it's super volatile. It, it, it doesn't know. I mean, you know, it, it only has its own clock and it's just in time when it decides it's just in time. And so you got to be a master of dealing with that. But you guys didn't you, you literally had trucks on the road when things got shut down, right? It's, you know, really, I look back on it and it just almost takes your breath away. You know, it's hard to even imagine. OK, so we had about 20 million dollars worth of fresh inventory somewhere in our system right so at any one point you just take a snapshot of our business we have 800 trucks full of produce out making deliveries wow okay we have 25 warehouses with product in it yeah we have trucks that have already picked up from the grower that are in transit yeah and and not only in transit but you have one at any given snapshot of time you have a truck loading you have a truck halfway to where you're going and you have another truck backing up at your oh, door. So when you look at the just the sheer volume of the product, it's just it's really unimaginable. And you know, and like I said, we never we never really had full appreciation for <laughs> what we were doing, yeah. I don't think, until it's it stopped. And and food service, you know, it didn't, you know, slow down. It didn't it stopped at yeah. first, you know. And so, you know, our first deal and our team did an amazing job. But, you know, first thing we were doing was, you know, we got all this inventory. I've said, you know, we are not throwing this in the trash. We're at least going to feed people with it. Right. So we knew we weren't going to be able to sell it. And it's so interesting because retail was booming, but food service packs are completely different than retail yeah. packs. You know, you got you know, eight ounce salads and one pound salads. We got, you know, six pounds, eight pounds, 20 pounds, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it was a completely different uh, product line for the most part. So uh, we went to just giving product away to everybody we could take it. We went to every food bank, woman's shelter, orphanage, 
anybody that could take food. And the, you know, the main thing is we were going to lose it financially. Mm -hmm. I wanted to at least, you know, make sure that we provided nutrition to people because obviously we were going to be going into a very tough time with the country. And so, uh, so that was kind of, you know, job one. And then, you know, then it just series of other challenges come into play. And the big thing was people, you know, Fresh Edge is all about the people. People ask me, you know, what's special about us? It's the people. Yeah. I mean, anybody can buy a warehouse, you can buy trucks, but, you know, it's the people that make a difference. And so we have, you know, just an amazing team and we loved our people. But, you know, obviously with no income, you can't keep paying payroll. Yeah. Uh, you know, that would have lasted about eight days and then we would have been bankrupt. Right. So we had to go through massive layoffs. I mean, just, you know, staggering. Uh, and, and these are, you know, this is like, you know, you, you talk about my sons in the business mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm very blessed to have two wonderful sons, but, you know, we have, you know, hundreds of men and women that I kind of consider my, my sons and daughters, right. uh, that are, you know, just, you know, amazing, uh, partners with us in the business. And so, you know, some of them, uh, weren't there anymore, but for the most part, they were the ones that had to go out and deliver the news to, you know, I mean, we had no trucks driving, so you don't need truck drivers, yeah. you know, you, not, no product picking, you don't need selectors. And so, you know, it was just, just a really brutal part of the process and I, I think more for us than some just because we you know we love our people and uh, but it was it was not you know if it was you you, you had no you choice had to do it. you had no yeah. choice and so uh, you know so it was just kind of like one pain point after another and we just kind of worked through them step by step and uh, but you know at the end of the day we you know we had an amazing team they were very uh uh, creative and innovative. We, um, we figured out, you know, there was all the restaurants were closed. People were looking for food. So we set up a deal where we would sell food and, and people would actually drive through our parking lot and pick really? up their bag of food or their box of food and things like that. So, um, you know, we, we just kind of, um, uh, <laughs> some people in the industry don't like this, but uh, one thing I always say about produce companies is uh, we're, we're just so darn resilient. And, you know, being from Florida, uh, we have a lot of cockroaches in Florida. Yeah. So but I, I, always, <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> I always liken this to, you know, you take a cockroach, you stomp on it, and, I really, and it, I really, it oozes a little bit, it goos, and then it steps up and it walks, walks away. away. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's kind of produce company. I really didn't think he was going to go there. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe scrappy. Yeah. But, you know, I hate... <laughs> I'd rather kiss a scorpion than see a cockroach. So. Really? Oh yeah, I hate them. Yeah. Uh, but know. but that is, that's a true point about the industry. Yeah, of the business. It is business. very resilient. You know, we figure it out. You know, you look over the years at you know all of the adversity we have faced in so many different ways, and we just get through it. You know, and so you know our team did a great job in getting through it, and. Uh, um, it was, you know, something that hopefully, you know, we never see again, but, you know, and, and there was no book written on no. how to deal with it. So, you know, every day was, you know, figuring it out for that day. But, uh, you know, we were very blessed uh, to, to make it through and the industry in general, uh, you know, made it through pretty well. Unfortunately, you know, some of our peers didn't make it through, yeah. but, uh, you know, a lot did. And um, so, you know, we... Uh, have gone through the you know the whole journey of the process and and we're really you know not back yet so yeah. it's kind of interesting and each part of the country is very different so i have homes in texas and florida mm -hmm. as you know and um you know those states are you know pretty much completely open and restaurants that closed or reopening or else new people have opened up um, and staffed, and, importantly, and, staffed, right? And, and staff, and people, of course, has been a huge, huge challenge for our entire industry. But, um, you know, in other parts of the country, uh, not near as much. And then in food service in general, there's still a component of the business. And for most people, it, you know, it depends on their mix. But 
probably somewhere around you know six to ten percent of their business is still not back yet and that was a lot of hospitality a lot of business meetings that were being had uh, at stadiums the games are back but the food's not back completely huh, okay. i think that will be more as the fall comes and uh we'll go through but that hasn't been back uh you know a, a lot of um conventions and those kind of things you know here we've got a great convention we've got great food but you know, this is just now on the comeback. So, gotcha. and, and in some states, it's not coming back as fast as others, you know what I mean? So for various different yeah, reasons, yeah, yeah, which no, we won't get into. Yeah, we won't go down that path. <laughs> but, uh... but the thing about it is, is that, you know, and, and the good news with that is, is that, you know, the industry is back um, in general, food service included. And, you know, we are doing pretty well but we still have a nice runway of continued um gain on the comeback trail so you mentioned some loss of peers or people in the business i'm just curious on the restaurant side of it right i mean i, I believe there's been some attrition in in that space um do you, do you have any insight you know percentage wise you know what we lost in terms of restaurant and was the bigger loss in the the, the white tablecloth group was it the the fast casual which, which where, where do we you know how, what do you, what kind of general number do you sense that that restaurants that closed and then what space was that in yeah you know i've seen a lot of different numbers and it depends on what you're looking at but um you know somewhere in the 10 to 15 percent is kind of the numbers that i've uh, heard in general but as far as loss but it was mostly much more uh prominent in the white tablecloth fine okay. dining. Okay, it is the fine and So, you know, if you look at um, fast food, you know, they had the drive throughs already. They figured it out. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the casuals did an amazing job. If oh, you look I mean, at Chipotle, Chipotle, for crying out loud. Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. I mean, there's so many success stories that people just did an amazing job, you know, to, changing their whole business model and and what they were doing so it was uh you know fascinating to see and be part of we worked very carefully with you know all of our uh, customers and one of the things that's really unique and special about fresh edge is that whether it's a single unit or 20 units or thousand units we really customize our program. You know, a, a lot of companies just kind of go in and say, here's what we have to offer. Do you want to buy it? Mm -hmm. We really dig in with the customer and see what is their need because we don't want to sell them what they don't need. Yeah. And we, we don't want them, you know, we, we can get a, a, a fairer profit if we're selling them only what they do need. And you need and, them to be around, right? And, you, you and know, we want them to be successful. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. We really look at ourselves as partners with them. And so during this process, we worked very hard to figure those things out and you know we got to go containers out to their locations we did you know all of these things because you know the the business uh, the dynamics of their businesses changed a lot during that time so uh, it was uh, you know it was kind of an interesting and, and I guess everything in life uh, I always um, through every you know I've been through earthquakes I've been through hurricanes i've been through tornadoes and you know in every bad event you know i always try to find what's the silver lining yeah. you know what i mean and i think the silver lining is we were always close with our customers i think we got even closer with them during this time right we really needed each other to survive and go through the process so you know i think that was a positive i think we're a better operator today we figured out you know necessity is the mother of invention. it kind of it uncovered a lot of things for all of us that maybe we weren't doing as well as we should have and, and 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 maybe yeah. i don't want to say got lazy but just you know we got yeah. we, we were we're not paying attention to everything and it uncovered a lot of things that for all of we us sure learned how to use video conferencing we, yeah, yeah, we did we that did. Yeah. Yeah. That, that that changed a lot <laughs> and that's for sure but i think the bottom line to your question was is that uh you know Casual, uh, family dining, uh, fine dining, white tablecloth was really just, you know, hammered. Really got hammered. Really yeah. devastated. And uh, so, you know, that's been a, um, a, a, a great comeback story, though, because, you know, when you look at the restaurants that were able to reopen, and, you know, a lot of them weren't, but uh, the ones that were, and they're, you know, flourishing and doing pretty well. And, uh, you know, there's already new restaurants that are popping up. And, uh, you know, 
uh, Americans are very resilient. It's, it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, we've been very aggressively growing our business mm -hmm. throughout the entire pandemic. And, and I would have friends call me and say things like, Whoa, Steve, that, that was bold. <laughs> and, you know, and it was kind of like, uh, you know, they, they were nicely saying that was stupid, but, <laughs> but you know, the thing was, is that, you know, I, I believed and from the very beginning, I said that people were like, the world will never be the same. And I said, you know, it's not going to be the same, but it's going to be a lot more normal than you think. Yeah. And I really, Really felt that from the beginning and and what really drove me to think about that is I always looked back to 9-11 which was just a you know a horrific event in our country and our in the world and it was so amazing because about I remember about two months afterwards I had a friend tell me as you know airline travel will never be the same and people will never travel like they used to right and uh, you know and then uh, didn't think too much of it at the time but then, you know, a year and a half later, planes were full. You couldn't get a flight. You know, it was crazy. So you know, mm -hmm. Americans, human beings in general, are very resilient. And produce people even more resilient. Even more resilient, for sure. <laughs> Just like cockroaches, right? Just like cockroaches. <laughs> oh, man. I had to go there. So, I, I, well, you we'll, know, go, we'll go with scorpions. scorpions. Thank you. <laughs> Rattlesnakes, scorpions. I love all those. Um, one of the things I thought was super cool, and I know, obviously, only so many folks could participate, but some, you know, restaurant operators partnering with retail or retail partnering with restaurant operators locally to provide prepared meals in stores. I mean, I know HEB did a bunch of that. That was pretty cool. You know, obviously for the lucky ones, they were able to move some, some product that way, but it was just, it was unfortunate that there couldn't be more of that, but. It was really good, though, and it goes back to, you know, this is an industry of people and just great people. And uh, I've, I've been, you know, involved in a lot of industries in my life. I've been involved in tech companies and I've been a partner in banks and manufacturing companies. God knows what all I've, I've done. But uh, I, I really, I always loved this business because of the people. And, you know, they really did come together and just figure out solutions. And uh, and and that's you know really what um, the business and and really life is is all about is you know figuring out solutions to challenges, getting through it together, and then um, you know uh, collectively having success. And so you know we. And I've, you know, with competitors, I've never been. I, I never, like, hate my competitors or, oh, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> uh, I, I love, you know, I've got great friends that are some of my biggest competitors. Right. And so, you know, I, I just look at it that I'm going to earn whatever business that I work hard enough to earn. Right. And if it comes from somebody else, that's their issue, not mine. Right. But uh, I never look at it, uh, you know, of, of trying to, to hurt them. And so, you know, we, we helped... Uh, you know a lot of our tough competitors and they helped us you know and that's one of the other great things about our industry you know we just like coming together like we have here over the last couple few days is you know we you know we, sure we duke it out and we go after and we to do everything we can to build and grow our business and sometimes it's at the expense of others but at the end of the day we're always there to come together and shake hands and break bread together and um hug it out uh, duke it out then hug it out duke it out and hug it out baby <laughs> yeah, i got you well i uh it, you know time goes quick and and uh, not only this day but certainly this interview and you know, you've got a lot of information, and, and I wish we could continue on, but we've got to respect your time. And hey, then, of course, respect. we could schedule a part two when we <laughs> yeah, get back. Well, and, and, and that, in all seriousness, I mean, I think it would be nice to, to have you back where we can maybe get into some different numbers because, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'd be curious to know your perspective. You know, if, if, so you got rid of the pandemic, you got demand back. Now, well, you got all those people, all those people that are gone. Well, now, now you need them. Where you know we we all need the labor, and you know we're having a hard time finding them. And then of course let's throw on hundred dollar barrel oil, and 
Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it's like, uh, okay, how many more things can we stack on here? You know, it's, uh, I don't even ask that question anymore <laughs> yeah. because you're, you're you're afraid to find out. Because uh, yeah, it can. What was it? Somebody said, you know, uh, don't think it can't get any worse because, buddy, yeah. it sure can. Well, last week I actually was rear-ended and you know, somebody smashed in the back of my car, and it had been a really rough day, and this and that, and then I get hit, and and I, and I was like, you know, I, I felt almost like looking up and saying okay what else you yeah. can throw at me and then i realized wait a minute i'm about to get on a plane yeah I, I, don't, don't ask that kidding. question <laughs> better not ask that but uh, no it was really it was really fun you know it's a it's a great industry and uh, both you guys have been great friends over the years and so really respect what you you guys have done in your career and with this uh, podcast so uh, it was an honor to be here today and uh, i'd love to join you again sometimes so, oh, thanks steve yeah we're, we're awesome yeah, yeah we're hey. Hey, appreciate that that's a way to that's now that's that, how you end a podcast that's a close yeah that's how you wrap See, up a day i told you i, I knew we had the closer man <laughs> what was the it closer. what was uh what was uh, closers for coffees for closers nolan ryan oh no i thought you were talking about no not uh, nolan ryan what uh, who was the big closer it was a big close was it uh catfish hunter is that who it was I'm, I'm not a big I'm baseball, not a baseball guy. guy. I'm not a big. Baseball I'm not a baseball guy, guy either. I don't know why I'm trying to smoke. Like, why are you? Why are you? I don't know. I yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> no, I was talking about Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, the movie. You know, oh coffee's my gosh, for yeah. Boy, coffee's for closers. Coffee's for closers. If there's coffee around, we'll get Steve. We'll a get coffee. Steve a cup of coffee. Yeah, you know, yeah. coffee. Actually, a diet coke. That's me. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, coffee for closers. That's a great movie, Steve. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, buddy. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the years, man. Let's uh, we'll we'll keep in touch and and like I say, now you're on the hook to come back. So yeah. so you. Oh, I look forward to many more years in the industry and uh, keep watching us at Fred Edge. Yeah. We're gonna tear it up. We will for sure.